Nick. And we are live. Oh, good. Hi guys, I'm Alice. I'm joined by Zuck as always. And today we are talking all about disk encryption and Microsoft BitLocker in particular. Why those subjects right now? Well, uh, a chap called Dennis Anzakovich. Dennis, I hope you've pronounced his surname correctly. Um, he works for a company called Pulse Security. They are based in a country called known as Aotearoa, uh, also very commonly known as New Zealand. And let me tell you one thing, the Kiwis are inveterate hackers, that's hackers for the sake of good. When it comes to penetration testing and lateral thinking and that as those aspects of computer security, those guys are great. By the way, if you ever get a chance to go to New Zealand around November time, do make an effort to attend KiwiCon. It's a great hacker convention where you'll learn an awful lot from, from guys who really care, and that's hacking in the good sense. Anyway, Dennis just did a fantastic article, which you can find online, uh, where he basically soldered some extra stuff onto the security chip in his Microsoft Surface laptop, and he was able fairly easily, well, with, with some machinations, to extract the decryption key, which is used by Microsoft BitLocker disk encryption. So everyone's wondering, hey, what does this mean for disk encryption? Or oh, it's getting them interested in disk encryption in the first place, because this is quite a, an act of daring do. Definitely. So could you just explain what you mean by disk encryption and how that differs from encryption in general? Yeah, probably should. Good idea to clarify that. Encryption in general, uh, our listeners are probably familiar with what that is. You know, if you have a regular lock, like a padlock, there's a key and you turn the key one way and it locks it, you turn it the other way and it unlocks it. So you've got a lock and a key. Encryption in computer terms works much the same way. You have a key, which is, might be a password that you type in, or it might be a special smart card or security dongle that you have to plug in temporarily. That lets you scramble data, and anyone else who doesn't know the password can't unscramble it and read it back. So that's encryption in general. It's a way of taking data, scrambling it so it's secret, so only trusted people can de-unscramble it. And when we talk about disk encryption, or more specifically, full disk encryption, like Microsoft BitLocker or Apple's File Vault, those are the two products that people are probably most familiar with, what we mean is we're, implying, we're applying this locking and unlocking of data automatically to everything that you put on the disk. In other words, that way, if someone steals your laptop and runs off with it, and they take out the hard disk and they try and read it somewhere else, in theory, absolutely everything on the disk, not just individual files, should be just so much as shredded cabbage. So full disk encryption, it's exactly what it says. It's a way that you have one password and it automatically scrambles and unscrambles your whole disk. So it's very easy to apply, but very broad and effective in what it protects. Okay, great. Hi, Wanda and Teresa. Thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Um, Good to have you. So why would you recommend encrypting everything and not just the kind of files that are sensitive? Oh, yeah, you mean, so you get a Mac and you run the install Mac OS app and it copies on gigabytes of Apple files and then you install Keynote and Numbers and Pages and Microsoft Word and Firefox and Chrome and all that stuff and then you start putting your own files on. Why would you encrypt all of the apps and operating system files? Because they're all the same as everyone else's, right? So isn't that just a waste of time? Why not pick the few that you really need to keep secret and just encrypt those? Well, you can encrypt those files if you want. That's a great idea, but never has this shirt been more appropriate. Mm -hmm. The idea of full disk encryption is it's a lower level of protection. It doesn't mean you can't encrypt additionally encrypt individual super secret files, especially, and encrypt individual files that you copy onto USB sticks, but the idea is it means you never have to worry that you might have forgotten something. So for example, there are many systems which will just encrypt your home directory, your home folder, which are your files and all the other files it leaves. The problem is, what if you copy a file to a temporary folder? What if an application is running and it makes a temporary copy of your file somewhere where it isn't being encrypted? The idea of full disk encryption is that nothing can reach the disk without being encrypted and nothing makes sense when read back from the disk unless it is decrypted. So it's a low level of stuff that basically solves this problem, that you never have to worry, oh dear, did I forget to encrypt my tax return? It'll happen automatically, that's the theory. So does that slow your computer down by encrypting everything? 
You mean, oh, uh, yeah, so if you just encrypt a few files, then you only need to use the encryption algorithm and the encryption software when you access those files. Well, that used to be a real fear that people had, and it's kind of become a bit of a myth. Now, actually, several years ago, when I had the Mac before the Mac before I have now, uh, I actually tried, with a, with a physical stopwatch, I actually went and I tried to measure the difference between my Mac with Sophos full disk encryption installed and without it, and there was no statistically significant difference. On a modern laptop, generally your processor has what's called multiple cores, it can do two things at once, so while you're working on Microsoft Word over here or browsing here or watching a video there, the encryption can be happening as, at the same time, it doesn't really interfere, and also modern CPU use uh, pro computer processors, laptop processors, they've actually integrated special instructions or special, uh, you know, if you like, arithmetic operations that make encryption faster. So I think that although there's a myth that encrypting everything slows your device down, I suspect that if you tried to measure the difference on a modern laptop, you would be hard pressed to do so. So the, um, that's a long way of saying no. At in general and not really, or no in particular and not really in general. Okay, that's really good to know. So back to the headline stuff. If BitLocker got hacked and anyone who steals your laptop could decrypt it, is there a point of doing it? Yeah, I guess that's what that's what motivated us. A couple of people around the office said, "Hey, does does that mean like does that mean encryption's dead?" And of course, it does not. Remember, in fact, I've got a picture here. Let me see if I can find it. I took this from Dennis's post. And as I said, if, if you go to pulsesecurity.co.nz, you should be able to find it. Um, I hope you can see this, uh, but this is a picture. You can get a sense of scale. There's a, a, a guitar pick in there. They're very useful for opening of mobile phones and laptops, as well as for playing guitars, obviously. And I hope you can see there, that little chip is the trusted platform module where the key is securely stored, and he's had to solder on those tiny little wires. So the deal is that firstly, you have to have the whole laptop, not just the drive. Secondly, you have to open it up without breaking it and be able to solder that stuff on without ruining the chip. Then you have to run some special software that Dennis describes. Uh, and then that only decrypts your device if it's set in an automatic decryption mode where the laptop basically supplies the key and decrypts itself. The recommended way of using BitLocker or FileVault on the Mac is that you don't just let the computer store the key. Basically, you have a password. Wow! <laughs> That's how good our video is, folks. <laughs> I think they may be celebrating a sales deal, but we'll take the credit. <laughs> the, the deal is that what you saw there, it, going through all that stuff that I showed you in the picture that Dennis had to do, that only works if you run BitLocker in its weakest mode, which is where the which really exists only so the laptop and the disk are kind of paired together. So if you remove the disk from the laptop, it won't decrypt in another laptop. The recommended way is that when you boot up, you have to type in a PIN or a password, or you have to wave a smart card or something like that. And that then allows the TPM to unlock, and that recovers the key, and that decrypts the drive. So basically, if you use BitLocker as you ought to, as you, as you really should, where there's a password you have to type in every time you reboot, then this attack won't work. So full disk encryption has not been killed off by this in any way. Now, the reason that some people like this kind of automatic self-unlocking mode is it means they don't have to remember a password. The problem is, it does mean that anyone who steals your laptop, basically, although they can't recover the key without doing the soldering, if they turn it on, then it boots automatically and it goes through the whole password thing and eventually you get to the login prompt. So if they can guess your login password, they're in any way. Whereas if you have the pre-boot authentication where you have to type in a password first, then you can't get beyond there and this attack is irrelevant. So no, this does not make full disk encryption specifically or encryption in general redundant. It's just fascinating research and it does indicate the kind of things that people can get out with comparatively inexpensive equipment if they're willing to try and it does indicate why why if you are following the advice here if you're going to do encryption do it properly in the way that the vendor recommends don't try and cut corners because if you cut corners the crooks can too okay so Teresa asked and this was going to be one of my questions as well what happens if you forget your key or your password 
Ah, oh, you mean, like, surely if BitLocker were hackable, that would kind of be better, because then you, you, then you could sort of, like, if you forgot your password, you could hack yourself and get your data back. Exactly. Well, the idea is, if encryption is going to work for you, it has to work be able to work against you as well. If you forget your password, you will lose all your data and you shouldn't be able to hack it because if you can hack it, anyone else can, except that uh, BitLocker and Apple's File Vault allow you to create what's called a recovery key. This is a long string of text. You can print it out or you can take a screenshot and then you save it somewhere not on your computer Typically the idea is you'd print it out, you'd lock it in a safe at home, and that key can be used to get the data off the disk in an emergency. It's not the kind of key that you type in every time, they're quite long and complicated. Ideally you'd never use it, but that's if you like the backup key, and as long as you keep that recovery key secure, it's like having a second key to your car that you keep locked away at home, so if you lose your key, it's a bit of a hassle, but you can still get back in. So don't leave the recovery key under your doormat like you do with your front door key, but all good encryption systems, it's not a back door, it's just a recovery key, an alternative way of getting in. The idea is you keep one copy of it and you keep it somewhere secure, typically under physical lock and key. Hopefully you'll never need it, but if you do, it's there for emergencies. So we have a, a specific question here from Kevin, and Hello, he Kevin. asks, um, does Apple's Fire Vault also support a required password solution? Uh, you, oh, you, yes. You, when, you, when you apply Fire Vault, it will ask you to enter a passphrase, and then it will ask you, you can also optionally enter a password hint. By the way, you can just put space. My recommendation is not to have a password hint because if you're giving yourself a hint, you're giving the crooks a hint. And at the same time, when you do that, you can click a button that will generate the recovery key, which is stored as well. And the idea is you print that off and stash it away. So yes, the idea with Apple as well, when you boot up, the password that you put in at the first login screen on your Mac, it looks like the regular login screen and it has the same backdrop wallpaper that you see when you're when you're normally logging in but in fact that's a pre-boot authentication in fact if you if you have a very high resolution screen you'll notice that the the text is a lot bigger on that screen so yes apple will require you to put in a password and the good news with apple with file vault for home users um, that's different to microsoft's bitlocker as i understand it with Microsoft Windows, if you want to have encryption BitLocker for removable drives like USB sticks, you have to upgrade, I think, to Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise. It'll cost you another 100 bucks. On the Mac, that's all built in. You can also do exactly the same thing, full device encryption for USB sticks. You put in a blank USB stick or put one in and wipe it. It'll say, do you want to initialize it? And when you do, you can actually choose to have it unencrypted if you want to share file, specific files with other people, or you can have the USB key encrypted as well. I strongly recommend you use that. And then you'll have a password for the USB key. So if you lose it, then you don't have to worry about what might have been on there. Perfect, thanks Doc. So just to summarize, what are your key tips around this? <laughs> um, basically, it's a great read how this guy managed with very, very inexpensive equipment, a few tens of dollars worth, and some very careful soldering, and as you saw in the picture, a guitar pick, to uh, access the, the security, the the security module in his Microsoft Surface laptop. It's an entertaining read, it's informative, it actually teaches you a lot about how full disk encryption works, and at the end of that article, he gives you good advice about what to do. So the takeaways are, go and read Dennis's article, it's, if, you, if you're technically inclined, it's great fun, but it doesn't mean that BitLock is busted, encryption's no use, and you shouldn't use it. Uh, full disk encryption is your friend. It doesn't stop the crooks stealing your data, but it makes it very much harder for them to do so. So read the research, enjoy it, but don't throw out encryption just because somebody has found a loophole if you use it in a non-recommended way. So it's getting quite loud around us, so I think it's time we wrap up this video. Yep. But as always, send your questions in the comments below if you have them at a later date, and we'll always get back to you. Thanks, guys. Until next time, stay secure. Bye. Bye.